So, thyroid. So, first thing that you always should do whenever you do any of these kinds of things is think about what you already know. Uh, the challenge, of course, is, is that many people have experience with hypothyroidism, um, can use that to your advantage, but be careful to overgeneralize. So what labs do we use? Well, basically, we check the TSH, and the TSH is um, the core of um, trying to figure out if someone is hypo or hyperthyroid. Uh, we usually do this when patients have complaints of fatigue or hair loss or constipation or um, palpitations or any of the signs of either hypo or hyperthyroidism. Um, we'll talk in a minute about the role of T4 and T3. TPO and thyroglobulin antibodies are a way to tell whether or not a thyroid condition, if someone has an autoimmune condition, then obviously it's a very different situation than if they have a condition which is not autoimmune. Um, hypothyroidism, there really isn't that much of a difference in approach, whether it's autoimmune or not. Um, but with hyperthyroidism, there can be a pretty dramatic difference. So low thyroid, what do you do? So if somebody has a high TSH, uh, the next thing you do is you check usually a free T4. Uh, in many cases, the TSH will be high and the free T4 will be normal. These people have a mild hypothyroidism. Uh, obviously, their body is uh, having to produce more TSH to stimulate the thyroid to produce more thyroid hormone. Uh, the effective version of the thyroid hormone is actually T3, but T4 is actually much easier to measure. Um, <clears throat> and so basically, we measure the T4. Uh, free T4 is, is less uh, interfered with by protein binding issues. So free T4 is the preferred um, methodology. So you have a person, they have a high TSH, they have a, a normal or slightly low free T4. We give them thyroid hormone to supplement, take some of the stress off the thyroid gland, let it uh, not have to overwork. Uh, is brand name necessary? Uh, there are people that still do brand name. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, the generics were enormously variable in regards to their dosing. We don't see that as much now. Most people feel like you can allow people to use generics. Uh, it's preferred that they stay with a consistent generic, but unfortunately, a lot of the pharmacies will take uh, bids. And depending on who gets the lowest bid, um, that's the thyroid hormone that they uh, distribute. Uh, how high does the TSH need to be start? A lot of people want it to be above 10. Other people, even if it's just above the normal um, and the patient feels symptomatic, very tired, uh, constipation, thinning hair, et cetera, they will go ahead and they will um, start therapy. There's two basic approaches to starting therapy. Some people do 1.6 milligrams per kilogram uh, per day. Um, so if you've got somebody who's 100 kilograms, a good big person, uh, you could actually do 100 times 1.6. You could even do 150 milligrams to start them out. The maximum is 300. Um, but um, in other people, they will want to start them more gradually. They feel it's less of a shock to the system, uh, and they'll start them off at 25 to 50 micrograms per day, uh, and then gradually titrate up. Uh, some people, if you start the 1.6, you've actually overshot a little bit, um, but usually not by much, and you get them to go a lot more quickly. Uh, no matter what, recheck the labs in about four to six weeks, uh, and uh, then adjust the dose. Uh, generally, we tell people to dose it an hour before the first meal, uh, and if somebody has variable levels, you may actually want to ask them about their patterns of uh, how they take their medication. Is there such a thing as a T3 deficiency? Uh, the jury is probably out on that one. Uh, a lot of the endocrinology folks believe that uh, uh, patients' T3s go down because their body is stressed uh, and that it really is a reflection of overall issues. Um, sometimes people in the ICU have a low T3 uh, and they'll refer to that as a euthyroid 6 syndrome. They're sick, that's why their T3 is low. Uh, it really is not a deficiency, especially if they've got normal TSH and a normal free T4, uh, they don't treat them. 
Other people feel like it's low and they have symptoms. Why wouldn't I treat them? Um, not an irrational approach, but as I say, it's not usually the most commonly accepted approach at this point. Now, the folks that feel that T3 can be deficient will usually either use Cytomel, which is a T3 analog, um, and there is some evidence that people get better, although there really is not a huge difference between that and placebo. So there is one of the theories is that that's a psychological benefit. Other people want to use Armour Thyroid. A lot of the naturopaths will use the Armour Thyroid because it is more natural. Uh, some people feel like uh, the fact that it comes from pigs and cows is not as desirable as it being synthetically made uh, and that you will develop allergies or responses to pig or uh, beef glands. Um, you know, we eat pigs and beef and, you know, ingesting it uh, in other ways is probably not irrational. But uh, as noted, that is where it comes from. So can you use thyroid in a weight loss approach? In people that are youth thyroid, it usually won't do much. It'll basically just lower their TSH. Their total body thyroid will be normal. <clears throat> um, there are people, however, who are trying to do this. So if you have someone uh, who uh, comes in and uh, they look like they're trying to lose weight and their TSH is essentially undetectable or very, very low, you may need to specifically ask them if they're taking a thyroid supplement. There are some of the uh, weight loss uh, providers who uh, do use thyroid, uh, even though it really isn't an approved or some would even say appropriate thing to do. In people that are hypothyroid, you may get a little bit of weight loss, but it's usually not substantial. So what about people that are hyperthyroid? So in people that are hyperthyroid, they'll be autoimmune. TPO is elevated in the majority of cases. Uh, the thyroglobulin antibody should also be checked because sometimes that's the only thing that goes up. In people that are hypothyroid, uh, if it's autoimmune, it's um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Uh, they can actually, when they first have it, they'll be hyperthyroid, and then as soon as the uh, thyroiditis uh, um, slows down a little bit, they become hypothyroid because there's some damage to the gland. Uh, in those people, you just supplement their thyroid. If they have low thyroid otherwise, you just supplement their thyroid. So is there a real important uh, uh, distinction between the two? Not that I am aware of. On the other hand, with hyperthyroid, if you have an autoimmune process such as Graves' disease, you're pretty sure that there isn't a secreting tumor that's doing this. <clears throat> Unfortunately, sometimes that secreting tumor can actually be a cancer, uh, so therefore you do need to be very concerned. Uh, there's other neoplasms that can cause hyperthyroidism, thyrotoxicosis, uh, such as you know um, multinodular goiters, uh, and uh, again, um, Hashimoto's or other thyroiditis will increase it. Uh, and there's other thyroiditis -itis as well. Um, now, the other thing you can do, or the thing you can do when you find some of this hyperthyroid, especially if they're symptomatic, um, one thing you can do is you can give them beta blockers. If their big issue is palpitations and fast heart, you can give them a beta blocker. You can actually directly block the thyroid hormone using PTU or methimazole. Methimazole is kind of the more modern of the two. Um, in general, in primary care, if you're going to do this, you're probably doing this as a short-term solution. Uh, I tend to get these people to uh, endo because um, I think an endocrinologist can evaluate this better. Other primary care people will keep them. Some do an ultrasound to make sure they don't have some sort of secreting mass. I don't really think that's enough. Uh, in general, the standard of practice is to do a nuclear scan. If you do that and it's negative, um, you know, and especially if you're thinking there's another etiology, uh, then you probably uh, can just treat them with the methimazole long term. Uh, the other options, of course, are surgical to remove part of the thyroid or use uh, radioactive iodine to kill part of the thyroid. Uh, I think these are probably better uh, explained and managed by an endocrinologist. So uh, if I have a patient with hyperthyroidism, uh, I get an endocrinology consult, but uh, I'd be very interested to see what your thoughts are on that.